with a net worth of $126 billion. Warren Buffett is largely regarded as one of the best investors of all time. And if you are a regular viewer of the channel, you will know how much I value Buffett and his colleague Charlie Munger's experience. Much of their success stems from long-term investments in companies with sustainable competitive advantages. Despite the fact that his company, Berkshire Hathaway, does not pay a dividend, a large portion of their holdings do. In reality, his investments bring in more than $4 billion in dividend income each year. In today's video, I will show you how Warren Buffett's massive cash flow allows him to consistently double his money on a variety of stocks. But first, if this is your first visit to our Smart Stocks Academy channel, please accept my warmest greetings. Hit the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell next to it to be the first to know when a new video like this is produced. So if you're ready, let's get to the topic. Warren Buffett is regarded for being a value investor. Picking equities that are trading for less than their inherent or book value is part of this investment technique. However, with a lot of help from Charlie Munger, this technique changed over time. I've been taught by Ben Graham to buy things on a quantitative basis. Look around for things that are cheap. And that I was taught that, say, in 1949 or 50. They made a big impression on me. So I went around looking for what I call used cigar butts of stocks. And the cigar butt approach to buying stocks is that you walk down the street and you're looking around for cigar butts and you find this on the street, this terrible looking, soggy, ugly looking cigar, one puff left in it. But you pick it up and you get your one puff. It's disgusting, you throw it away, but it's free. I mean, it's cheap. And then you look around for another soggy, you know, one puff cigar. Well, that's what I did for years. It's a mistake. Uh, although you can make money doing it, but you can't make it with big money. It's so much easier just to, to buy wonderful businesses. So now I would rather buy a wonderful business at a fair price than a fair business at a wonderful price. You really want to be in a wonderful business because the time is the friend of the wonderful business. You keep compounding, it keeps doing more business, and you keep making more money. Through their investment in C's Candy, they learned how to focus on the quality of the underlying business. But we both kept learning all the time so that the man we were five years earlier was less sensible than the man who ultimately was there. And C's Candy did teach us both a wonderful lesson. And it'll teach you a lesson if I tell you the full story. If C's Candy had asked $100,000 more, Warren and I would have walked. That's how dumb we were at that time. 10,000 more. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the reasons we didn't walk is while we were making this wonderful decision, we weren't going to pay a dime more. Ira Marshall said to us, you guys are crazy. There's some things you should pay up for. You're underestimating quality. Well. Warren and I, instead of behaving the way they do in a lot of places, we listened to the criticism. We changed our mind. And that is a very good lesson for, for anyone. The ability to take criticism constructively is a, well, think of all the money we made for, for accepting that one criticism. And if you count the indirect effects from what we learned from buying C's, you can say that Berkshire's been built partly by learning from criticism. Now, I'll tell you exactly why leaving C's Candy would have been a bad decision. They purchased the entire company for $25 million in 1972. The company produced $31 million in revenue and $2.83 million in profit after taxes that year. In addition, the company required $8 million in working capital to stay afloat. Buffett was unwilling to spend more than $25 million for C's because of his assessment of the company. Berkshire Hathaway has made $1.35 billion in pre-tax earnings from C's candy as of 2007. Additionally, C's sales were $383 million in that year. 
resulting in pre-tax profits of over $82 million. As a result, every year, Buffett more than triples his initial investment in C's suites. It made no difference whether they paid $100,000, a million, or even $10 million extra based on this. C's chocolate made well north of $2 billion in pre-tax earnings in 2019, according to Buffett, and the chocolate company remains a cash cow for Berkshire Hathaway. C's candy is a great example of what Buffett looks for in a company. Through considerable brand and client loyalty, the company has developed a competitive advantage. What we seek in a business is a long-term competitive edge in a stable industry, Buffett remarked. It's great if it comes with rapid organic growth. However, even if organic development isn't possible, such a firm might be gratifying. We'll simply take the business opulent earnings and invest them in similar firms overseas, he said referring to C's candy. C's candy has paid everything virtually out to us that they've earned because they do not have the ability within C's candy to use large sums which they earn uh, intelligently in their business. So it would be an enormous mistake for C's Candy to retain money. So they distributed Berkshire, and we hope that we move that around in some other area where that dollar becomes worth a dollar ten cents or a dollar twenty cents in terms of present value terms. If C's Candy were a standalone company, we would simply pay out a lot of the, the, the earnings, practically all of the earnings and dividends, just like we do now, except it goes to Berkshire. The company had little growth potential, but it was able to deliver a consistent cash flow. Buffett's subsequent investments would reflect his philosophy of buying exceptional businesses at reasonable prices. This link may be traced back to the types of businesses he targets. Dividend stocks are frequently very lucrative and well-established businesses with well-proven business models. This closely resembles Buffett investment preference. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway earns roughly $4 billion in annual dividends, as I said at the start of the video. This figure excludes returns from companies in which they own 100% of the stock, such as C's Candy. The Coca-Cola company, which Buffett has owned since 1988, is one of his best-performing dividend stocks. This year, he will receive more than $656 million in dividend income from that investment. Buffett has now a 50.5% dividend yield on cost based on an initial cost of $3.245 per share. This means that through dividends alone, he is more than doubling his initial investment every two years. Warren Buffett made a large investment in Apple in 2016, and Berkshire Hathaway currently owns 5.9% of the firm. He has already gotten a good return on his investment, but I believe it's on its way to being his next Coca-Cola. He expects to earn $822 million in dividends this year, the biggest of any of his holdings. Apple is currently the most valuable brand on the planet, and its customers are extremely devoted. It also has a 9-year dividend growth history and a 5-year compound annual growth rate of 10.5%. Berkshire Hathaway's Moody's, a credit rating, risk assessment, and data analytics firm is another cash cow. It will pay out about $55 million in dividends this year. Berkshire's annual yield on costs is 22.3%, with an initial cost basis of only $10.05 per share. Every four and a half years, Buffett doubles his initial investment through dividends. Given Moody's current stock price of $329 and 0.85% dividend yield, his investment is a perfect example of how long-term investing can deliver enormous returns on investment. Buffett receives $260 million in annual dividend incomes from American Express. Berkshire Hathaway has a 20.3% dividend return on cost at an initial cost of $8.49 per share. This means that with dividends alone, they will have more than doubled their initial investment in less than five years. Bank of America pays $743.7 million in annual dividends. Wells Fargo, $659.3 million. Kraft Heinz, $521 million, U.S. Bancorp, $222.5 million, and J.P. Morgan Chase, $214.2 million, among other prominent investments. These are just a few of Warren Buffett's many dividend-paying companies. The primary point is 
that investing in companies with enduring competitive advantages over a long time horizon can result in large cost yields and returns. I hope this video gave you some food for thought, and do let me know if you enjoyed this topic in the comments. And with that, today's video comes to an end. If you haven't already, hit the like button below to show your love and support for this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button and turning on the notification bell right next to it to be the first to know when a new video is posted. Thank you for stopping by to watch and we hope you had a great time. We hope to see you again soon.